Hello and welcome to our brand new second episode of The Blue Shirt I Wore. On this episode, we'll be joined by Lymphy legendary striker, Glenn Ferguson. Glenn, thanks for joining us today. Some special memories, I'm sure myself and everybody else will be hearing very soon. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it'll bring back some uh, memories for me that I've obviously forgotten about. You know, so it'll be nice to go through the, through the years and, uh, and pick out some special moments. Okay, Glenn, before we get started on obviously your time at Linfield, uh, tell us a little bit about how you started then at Ards. Yeah, well, I joined Ards as a young boy um, with a, a good friend of mine, Robert Campbell, who ironically came on the same for, for Linfield as well. Um, and I was at Ards for a couple of years and made my way into the first team. And unbeknown to me, on the way down to Glen Avon one day, um, one of the strikers took, took ill and I was three in the deep end. And, uh, made my debut and we beat Glen Avon 1-0 and was able to score. Scored the, the goal on my debut against Glen Avon. So um, I, I thought that that was me then, you know, but that, that was my only goal that season with Ards. But I, I was there for another two years and then um, I had a, a raft of change of managers and a certain manager came in and didn't think I was capable of playing. So I went back and I played for a guy called Alec Robson who used to play for Glen Torn. Um, Alex was the manager of Fisher Buddies. So we went into the amateur league on the January and played until the summer and then you know Terry Nicholson came and watched me play for Fisher Buddies and as I say the rest is history you know I went down to Glen Avon again completely out of my comfort zone drove all the way down there on my own and not really knowing anybody and then you know I hit the ground running that year and had a really good season. Tell us a little bit about then your time at Glen Avon then obviously as you say it's a special time for yourself yeah, yeah, it was great. You know, the boys were very welcoming when I first went. Um, you know, some smashing players, you know, Steve McBride and Gary, Gary uh, Blackledge, Jeff Ferris, you know, there was just a lot of good season um, Irish League players. You know, in my first season, you know, they, they played a good brand of football, good fast flowing football, liked the attack. So I think that year, my first year at Glen Avenue, I scored 37 goals, you know, which was, uh, gave me a real good boost in the, the following season. And ironically, again, the next season, you know, Linfield came in and wanted to sign me. But I just thought I wanted to wait and see what was going to happen because I didn't want to just have one good season and then go back and not mm -hmm. work out. So I managed to stay for another six and a half seasons at Glen Avenue. Played with some great players, just as I mentioned, Steve McBride. You know, um, Raymond McCoy came in, and with the likes of Lee Doherty, Gary Smith, Mark Glenn Denning, you know, really, really top class Irish, Irish League players. Almost won the league in 94, uh, but then we did, we lost a couple of Irish Cup finals, but we eventually won it then in 97, which was probably the, at that stage, the pinnacle of my career, you know, winning the, winning the Irish Cup final. As a young lad coming through, you said you played with some great Irish League players there. What was it like coming through and looking up to some of them players then throughout the years? Oh, it was great, you know, because, you know, when you're growing up, Gary Blackledge at that stage was coming probably near the end of his career. But listen, what a goal scorer, you know, I know he was a Glen Torn legend, but even when I went to Glen Avon, he didn't do an awful lot of running about, but I think by about the first four months of the season, he had scored 14 goals for someone who was in sort of mid-30s, you know, so great to watch him. And then, obviously, became a good friend of mine, Lee Doherty as well, obviously watching Lee playing for Linfield as well, you know, quality player. Um, so it's good to see, you know, and get the, get the opportunity to play with some of these boys, you know, and I still see that a lot of them today, you know, and we can now reminisce about games we played against and with each other. It shows you then how happy you must have been at Glen Avon, obviously turning them field down that first time they came in for you. Yeah, it, it was good. We had a really good family atmosphere at Glen Avon. The club were great and anybody that still goes there will still say the same thing. You know, then we started to really build good teams and as I say, 94, we almost won the league under Alan Fraser. We were very unlucky um, losing it on the last day when we drew a Porter down. But we still kept building the team and, you know, getting the Irish Cup final in 96, which we lost. Then we got into it in 97, the game which we won, which was a, a great lift against Cliftonville. But then some of the players started leaving, you know, um, Steve McBride was going and you know, Gary Smith went back to um, Glen Torn and Mark Glenn Denning was leaving. So I just thought then the club was starting to lose a bit of ambition. So I then was the one that instigated the move come the January 90 and I asked for a transfer. Um, I wanted to be placed on the transfer list because I had an ambition of going on and winning a league and that was what I wanted to do and thankfully, and as I say, Linfield came in and it worked out for me. Okay then, tell us a little bit about the first shirt then you've brought today. 
Yeah, this was, um, again, playing for Glenarm, they say we had a good side and we were um, good players. Um, we were playing really well. And then Northern Ireland that stage had to be an international team. And we just so happened, myself and Gary Smith were playing probably at the top of our game at that stage. And we got picked to play with boys who were coming up and coming in England and boys who were sort of in the fringe of the international squad. And, and I remember because Gary Smith um, was a centre half and Arne Hughes as a young 17 year old made his debut for, for Northern Ireland that day. So that was something that would stick in my mind when you think of the career that Arne went on to have. You know, but I remember we played Portugal. Um, Portugal beat us 2-0 on the night. Um, I, I scored a goal and I still to this day said it was onside, but the referee unfortunately gave it offside. Uh, but no, it was a great, great experience just getting in the ring and getting an international vibe and just to see what it was like and how you, how you prepare for games and what it was like. So, you know, that's a shirt I've always kept just simply because that was my first ever international appearance. Okay then, <clears throat> on to your first season then at Linfield that like you touched upon in January, signing for the fee, mm -hmm. £55,000, which was a record at the time. Mm. Tell us a little bit about then uh, the expectation levels then on your shoulders coming to Linfield with a big transfer fee. Yeah, well, you know, I always look back on it and I'm sure a lot of players do now who are going for bigger transfer fees. You know, the transfer fees are nothing to do with the player. They're mm -hmm. between the two clubs. So some people will feel pressure. I didn't feel any pressure. You know, I always believed in my ability to score goals. You know, I, I, by the time I came to Linfield, I'd already scored 250 goals in the league. You know, so... Uh, and that wasn't playing for the top team, you know, mm. so I always believed that I could go on and score more goals. But, you know, obviously Limfield and Glenn Torn came in for me at that time and I had to keep my options open. But thankfully, with the help of the European club, you know, um, the club were just as affluent as they are now. Um, had to go and borrow some money, <coughs> get the money put together and say the money was donated. I think it was Jackie Hewitt was the chairman at the time yeah. and put the money up and thankfully I was able to sign and started the season um, quite slowly and I'll, I'll forget, never forget the, the match at Windsor, we were playing Cole Rain and Tony Gorman I think was on the penalties and because I was new and striker he gave me the ball and I missed the penalty <laughs> to get my first goal but no, it wasn't long coming and then as I say um, the rest again is history there. Do you remember much about your first goal? Um, I do actually yeah because um, it came after the fourth game and I always think there's ironic things in football and it just so happened that we went back to Morningview and I was obviously was getting abuse from the fans um, being called a traitor and stuff like that the ball came in the box and they headed it home at the back post you know so and people always say when you go back to your old clubs you know don't be celebrating goals that wasn't in my rep, uh, register that day you know um, I couldn't wait to celebrate you know I always think if you celebrate your goal celebrate it as if it's your last because you never know what's happening so I, I celebrated that goal I think we won the game 4-0 and uh, as I say it was good to get off the, off the mark for Linfield and especially against Glen Adam the old club OK Glenn moving on to 98-99 season uh, a season for yourself with a good personal milestone of scoring your first Linfield goals in a cup final and of course it was even more special against Glen Torn yeah, yeah, it's always good getting the cup finals and then, of course, against your biggest rivals. And when you get there, it's all about winning, you know, but to uh, to score goals in cup finals is always special as well, you know. And, you know, first we went in front and then we're um, led to believe we were, led, were pegged back by Scott Young, scored the equaliser, but then, unfortunately, we were able to go on and score the winner. I got the, the winner to go on and win the, the cup 2-1. Uh, so it was good to, to score and get the first piece of silverware. Um, in the cabinet and uh, again it takes no little bit of pressure off you know because when you when you come to a club like this for a high transfer fee you know you're expected to help to win trophies and that was that was one we did okay then tell us a little bit about then your experience you had then in austria then at one stage in your career yeah i went to um it was a team called casino salzburg uh, just for a trial um i remember there was a video floating about there not so long ago of it and everybody was sort of taken back that they didn't know you were actually away in Austria then? Yeah, yeah, it came up on social media, I'm not on any social media and it came up and then it started, people were starting to show me it and I think, I think it was maybe 25 or 30 years old or whatever the milestone was, you know, but then you know people were going, came up to me and all, did you, did you actually play against Bayern Munich and, and I says yeah I did and you know, happened to score in the game, you know, so I think people were a bit shocked by that and uh, you know, but I've always had that in the back of my mind every time, you know, Michael Gall talks about his Croatia's Zagreb goal. You know, I just tell him, you know, Bayern Munich's a wee bit better than that, so it keeps him quiet for a bit. 
Oh, well, that's good to hear. I believe there was a wee experience as well at Wraith Rovers in Scotland. Yeah, yeah, I went to Wraith as well. It wasn't long after that, actually. And Jimmy Nicholl was the manager and obviously he had heard of good things about what was going on in my career and scoring goals. And it was over and it was easier to settle over there because one of my friends, Norman Kelly, was playing for Wraith at the time. And uh, yeah, again, you know, we trained and, and played, scored a couple of goals in the game. And again, you know, Jimmy Nigel wanted to wanted to sign me, but you know at that time in my career it just didn't work out financially. It wouldn't have been any benefit to me to go there, you know. So um, I just sort of come back, knuckle down, and, and do what I, could, what I could do over here, and it's worked out okay. Well, thankfully for us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm yes, well, you know what I mean. Say. Yeah. Okay, then moving on to 1999-2000 season. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's something you remember fondly being your first league title. Then. Yeah, uh, it was great. This is. This is why I wanted to, to leave, well, why I felt I had to have the need to leave Glenavon because I wanted to win the league title. I'd won an Irish Cup, won numerous other trophies with Glenavon, you know, but the, the league title's the holy grail. And I thought, you know, Linfield were more prepared and equipped to win it than what Glenavon were. So I, uh, when I put the transfer in, this is what I wanted. And on that, that day, down in cold rain, you know, unfortunately, the result didn't go our way, but I think maybe... Glen Torn might have been playing distillery or whoever it was that day. Both results went our way. Well, the result didn't go our way, but the other one did. And we became league champions at Cole Rain. And I remember the old changing rooms and we had a bath. And I think some of the lads, you know, we were sitting in the bath for over an hour, an hour and a half, just bring us more beer in, bring us, well, we're just celebrating having their, I think for a few of the lads, it was their first title, you know. So uh, we really enjoyed it that day. And uh, I think that gave us the real hunger to go on and win more and want to have that feeling again and win more league titles and we Get, did. Getting that first league title, did you feel as if there was any pressure lifted off your shoulders, obviously signing from Linfield or signing for Linfield and then maybe having to wait that wee while to actually get it then? No, I don't think so, you know, because I think, you know, when you've been here for so long, you realise how much the pressure's there, you know, Linfield if they don't win the league one year, they have to win it the next year. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way the fans, you know, the fans wanted, the club wanted, you know, and what, that's what the expectations are. So to, to win it, um, the thing for us was then to try and improve, get stronger and get better to go and try and challenge and win it the next year again. You know, because there's no point resting on your laurels, you know, you just got to try and make yourself better. And I think over the, the course of the next number of years, we did. I could... Linfield up until then had a bit of a barren spell mm -hmm. in the 90s with league titles. I, th I think that didn't win the league title until 94, until then. So it was something yeah. then that I'm sure was a massive lift for everybody involved at the club. It was, you know, it, it takes a bit of pressure off the manager as well, you know, and particularly for me because if he's seen to be fork, forking out a lot of money and players who are meant to come and help to win the league, you know, once that happens then, you know, the pressure's lifted a bit on him then, and then they get trusted more to invest more in the team and get better players in, mm -hmm. which we did. Okay then, moving on to 1999-2000 season. Two lovely kits. Have you any fond memories of that season at the club? 2000, again, you know, I think that was my uh, good year. I had a good year with the club that year. And we, we won the league. And I was lucky enough to win the, the Football Writers Player of the Year and the Ulster Player of the Year as well, you know. So personally for me that year, uh, it definitely went well. Uh, but ultimately for the team, it's all about winning trophies. And again, we've done that and uh, we were able to get over the line again, you know. So it's good. That was the, the Sagamon in the bag. OK, Glenn, moving on to 2000-2001 season, which was your first Irish Cup for the club. Mm -hmm. uh, another special memory for yourself? Yeah, as I say, you know, picking up trophies and obviously the league titles were, were great, but Irish Cup final day is special, you know, players want to be there in the last last day of the season and for us to be there was great, you know, but you got to go and win it and thankfully on the day with a, with a striker who was on form, Chris Morgan, um, scored two great goals, um, it was a great occasion and the fans were great, the crowd was massive. You know, so it was great. And I think I remember one of Chris's goals. He went through, and I think he made a chip the keeper. I'm not sure, but well, it was that game. But it was it was a great goal anyway, just to, to win it. You know, so um, quality player and a quality game, and it's always good to win. That was my first Irish Cup. I didn't feel, and as I say, we went on and we were able to get some more. So that was that was a, a good defining moment as well. While the time here, did you use your experience of previous cup finals in preparation for 
your first cup final then with Linfield? I'm being totally honest. People always ask me about Irish cup finals, you know, and I'd, I'd, I'd played on a few, I'd played in three or four with Glen Avon. And, you know, it's something I never got nervous in Irish cup finals or, or any cup finals for some reason. You know, the occasion was, you know, just something I wanted to soak up and, and be ready for. Um, so I tried to calm the nerves and do away with them as much as possible and just get out and get on with the game. To me, it was just another football. It was just more at the end of it. And if you'd done your job, you, you would get the, the final reward, which more often than not we did. Then another personal accolade then for yourself was mm -hmm. your first Northern Ireland start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'd made my debut previously um, against Canada at Windsor, which was great. But this was my first um, start against Norway. You know, and the old Windsor Park, as you'll remember, the old tunnel walking down was very mm -hmm. narrow. And I'll, I'll always remember, you know, walking down, getting ready to wait and play and looking across and, you know, John Carew was there and Oli Gunnar Solskjaer and Henning Berg and all these players who were playing the Premier League and I'm walking down thinking, I'm playing against these boys. So, <laughs> great experience. I have to say, a great experience. And played for the majority of the game, I think I played for about 75 minutes. And actually, I think I played off front with David Healy at the time, with two of uh, we were strike partners, so uh, no, it was it was a good occasion, and it's always good, obviously, to play for a country. But to uh, play at Windsor and to start and come out when everything was was buzzing, it was great, you know. So a great experience will always live with me. It shows you how good your form must have been in that season to get the call up then, because you know what it's like now. It's you know people maybe look at playing in the Irish League that they shouldn't get a call up mm -hmm. to the senior international squad. Yeah, I, I think. You know, people get a wee bit overawed, but I, I was a wee bit apprehensive going into the very first squad and went into, you know, because with players the likes of, you know, Neil Lennon and Michael Hughes, Keith Gillespie, Ian Dye, boys like that. But once you get in around them, you know, there wasn't that much difference. They had a, obviously a bit more quality, maybe a bit more fitness, but it wasn't night and day. Mm -hmm. And I think it even now proves, you know, we've seen Conor McMahon going into the squad now and doing really well. So he's came from the Irish League into there and showed that, you know, players here can't live with it. You know, so I think there's many more should get the opportunity. Um, and uh, it's an opportunity you got to grasp and enjoy it as much as you can. How did you find it then yourself, obviously, starting the game compared to starting the game then in the Irish League? Um, it was slower, you know, the Irish League's a lot quicker and it's a bit more robust with the, uh, international football, the ball's played about a bit more, but when you get the ball in international football, you have to protect it and look after it, you know, sometimes in the Irish League you can give it away and you win it back pretty quick. International football, you lose the ball, particularly against teams like Norway and, and the better teams, you know, you might get it back for a while, so, you know, your first touch is always very important and, and getting a good touch early on in the match and uh, no, I thought it done well in the, in the game and, 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 show, and showed up quite well for the Irish League. To be fair, that's probably one of the best Norway teams there's been for quite a while. Yeah, you know, you with know. all the quality that they had there, you mentioned some I, of the names there. I remember, funny, it was Sammy McElroy and the team talks says about John Carew playing up front. I think he was playing for Valencia or something at the time. You know, and he obviously played for Aston Villa and all in the Premier League. You know, and Sammy McElroy class him as a flick on merchant. You know, <laughs> and we're going, mm, I think he might have a wee bit more than more that. Than you that. Know? Oh, and we went out, we actually did, you know, because he was mm. able to dribble and he was pirouetting on the ball. And then, of course, Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, playing beside him was, was something else, you know. It was, it was a great experience. Well, that's yeah. good. OK, Glenn, moving on to the 03 04 season. Uh, another good season then for yourself, scoring 25 league goals mm -hmm. and winning two individual. Accolades? Yeah, um, again, it was great to get another league title. Um, part for me personally, it was a good season. Um, although it was a great season, obviously, for the whole the club winning the league. But to finish top goal scorer, 25 league goals, and then to win the, the Football Writers Player of the Year and the Ulster Player of the Year again um, was great. And also that year, I think we won the County Adam Shield as well. You know, so to win the league and get another trophy, it's always class a successful season. Um, but as I say, personally, to finish league goal scorer as well, you know, it's, it certainly helps with, with your confidence to take on to the next year. And, you know, I wasn't a young pup then either. You know, <laughs> I think I was about 34 maybe at that stage, 34, 35, you know. And just when you, you pull the shirts out, you know, Last of memories of those um, was Kenny Irons and, uh -huh. and, and uh, I, call him I remember well Phil, Phil Charnock. Charnock yeah yeah Phil Charnock 
you know, two great players. Unfortunately, Phil came in and got an injury, but Kenny Irons was, you know, he was great. He didn't get about the pits much. He was outstanding that uh, season in the middle of the park. Keeping the ball, what you needed for somebody, mm -hmm. uh, what they would call now as a CDM, you know, holding the ball, getting them past the moving it. He was superb at it and a great player. And he was great around the changing room as well. You know, loads of experience from playing in England, loads of hundreds of games in England. So he came in and when things got a bit tight, Kenny was able to, to settle us down, you know. So it was a great season again. And I say, ultimately, he won in the league championship and that's what we've done. Early on in that season, you played with Paul Douglas as well. Yeah. I remember fondly this down at, wearing this kit down at Larne one day. Yeah. Obviously, Larne's a lot different back then compared to what it is now. It is, yeah. Um, but you know, Paul came in obviously with the whole stigma and the whole attention around him about who his father was, which was unfortunate for him. You know, but he came in and he, he started well and he sort of hit the ground running, scored a few goals. I think there were a few penalties in there as well, but unfortunately for him it didn't really work out and he didn't last too long, you know. Uh, but he's moved on and he's, he's done well for himself in, in the game in, in America and, and in England, you know, so, but no, we just had to look after ourselves after that and we've done that and we've done and sealed the title again. Okay then, 04 05 season then, uh, I'm sure it's a bit of a heartache season as well for yourself as like it is for me, and um, with the pleasure of wearing this kit then for two seasons. Uh, Obviously, we lost the league on the last day of the season against uh, the Glens, pipped us to the league title that day. Tell us a little bit about what it was like uh, losing on the, that fateful day at the Oval. It was difficult, you know, um, simply because we knew a point would have, would have done. And I think the whole scenario of had all that happened, you know, the game, the way it was ebbed and flowed, and we got the two each, and then, you know, Sod's Law, you know, someone who had been raced the year previous. Chris Morgan, great lad, great players, as we alluded to earlier. You know, had to go and do a job for the team mm -hmm. he's playing for. And I remember, I think it was Michael Holiday had a header and Al Manis has saved it, but Chris is in the right place at the right time and sticks yeah. it in. Unfortunately, the, the unsavoury scenes afterwards sort of took a bit of a gloss off of their their performance and what happened. Um, and it, was, it's, it will always be classed as Morgan Day. You know, but I think... You know, once we get back into the changing room and the manager got us down and then out that week again, you know, it, I think it galvanised us more, mm -hmm. you know, because the disappointment was so huge. And then we had to go and play Satanta. And then, you know... Ironically, at the same venue then yeah, a few days later. Yeah, and to go on and, and to beat them. And then, you know, to get into the Satanta Cup final, uh, nobody would give us a catch hell and chance of winning. You know, the boys really... You know, we were superb on the night. The fans were great. You know, the whole the whole occasion was great. And I think that just set the catalyst for the next season. Goldie spoke a little bit about the time on the bus. You and him speaking about, oh, we'll be doing well to keep it uh, mm. 2 or 3 nil. Because make no mistake about it, Shelburne at that, that time were a fantastic side. They were so close <sighs> to qualifying to the Champions League. Yeah, listen, they, they were... Yeah, they were full of really, really good players, full-time players, and you know I'd, I'd seen previous games with, you know, the guy Joseph Undo playing for them, and I think he was, in, I think he was a Cameroon international. International at the time, he was yeah. getting the ball and he was pinging it about over the place, and the wide men who were good, defensively they were very strong. So we thought, you know, we'll do well to go down here and just give a good account of ourselves. You know, we give a good account of ourselves, but then got the result at the end of it as well, which, which is what we ultimately wanted to do. Did we really expect it? Probably not. If we're being honest with ourselves, but then that's the thing about this game, you know. If you go out and you give it everything you've got, you make it the result at the end, and which we did. You mentioned there about how good of an opponent they were. Is there anybody you would class as being one of the most difficult opponents that you faced, as in individually? Uh, listen, I find you know we we played against teams in in the south, and you know. We have every bit as good a player up here, and you know I always look back. At, I mentioned him earlier, Gary Smith. He's a good friend of mine, but also he's a warrior. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Winky Murphy was the same when I played against Winky. Um, John Devine was tough. Chris Walker, you know, Glenn Dunlop and Barry Hunter was a partnership. You know, there were loads and loads of good players. Uh, Brian Strain and you know Alfie Stewart as well. You know, partnerships all over the, all over the league. You know, were really, really strong in, in that era. And I think that's what stood me in good stead going through because you played against some really top, top players. And, you know, you had to be in the top of your game to, to, to play against them. And that's what we've done. But down there, I think it was Dave Rogers played um, centre half. And the captain, I just can't remember his name at the minute, but, you know, really, really Sturdy good. Sturdy Byrne was the captain. Sturdy Byrne, yeah. yeah. You know, really, really good players. And uh, as I say, that, that's, yeah, that gave us a catalyst to go on and, you know, take it into the next season. You mentioned partnerships there. This, ironically, was 
the kit then that the partnership started then with Spike and Pistol? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think Peter, he got his opportunity to come in and he grasped with both hands and that's what football is all about, taking your opportunities. You know, and Peter will be the first one to tell you he isn't the greatest footballer in the world, but what he done, he done really well. He was a good ball carrier. You know, he knew the where to be in the box at the right time, uh, the right place at the right time. You know, and listen, his goal record speak for self. He had over 200 goals and whatever amount of games in and then he got to move himself to England, which uh, unfortunately didn't work out. But quality player to play with, Simply because you know of his work rate, you know he was a, he he was occupied other defenders, which created space for me. You know, but it wasn't just me; it was me, him, and at that time Davy Larmer as well. Davy Larmer's a quality player. Mm -hmm. You know, when either of the three of us played as a two, you know, we were confident that we could go out and, and, and win games simply because we all believed in each other. But no, it was a great start for Peter, and he just had the crown on. Okay, Glenn, moving on to the 05-06 season which I'm sure a very special memory then for yourself, the clean sweep season. Mm. Tell us your thoughts about that and any memories that stand out as you scored a good few goals that yeah, season. This is probably the season that I can remember most about, um, but simply because I just thought over the whole course of the season, we were very lucky, one, um, that we didn't have too many injuries. The team was very, very consistent and very rarely changed mm -hmm. throughout the season. And I think... When, once the season got up and running, then we lined up in that uh, narrow um, tunnel to go out. I think when teams looked across and seen us, they were nearly beat before they went out. And that's being totally honest. I think if they came away and they were beating one 0 it was like a moral victory to them for some for some strange reason. Because that year alone, um, you know, I scored forty two, and Peter scored forty eight. So there's ninety goals straight away before anybody else chips in. <laughs> and I think three or four of the midfielders all had double figures as well. You know, so we, we weren't just going out and winning games 1 and 2-0. There were some of the games where we were winning 7. I think we went down the Institute, won them 1-8. <laughs> you know, so it was just a season when everything that you wanted to click, to click together. And every player was on top of their game. Everybody was working for each other. You know, everything seemed to do right, you know. Everything he wanted to do right, sorry, was done right. And it just resulted in us winning game after game and then the trophies came after that. Do you remember much about the Count Antrim Shield final that night at Seaview against Palomina? Yeah, yeah, it was a dreadful night, I remember. And, you know, it was a tough game. I think that Kevin Kelby maybe scored yeah, for he, them. He, he scored, opened scoring he scored for, them. for them. It's the memory um, that always stands me is uh, where Kelby went clean through. And the ball bobbled just as he was about to hit it, and then he hit the bar. Hit the crossbar with it, yeah. And then I think I scored the winner. Yeah. I think it was Oren Kearney then. Cor yeah, yeah. Oren scored, then I hit one. I think it came off the ground with a wet surface and, and went in, you know. And that was the first one. I think we beat the Glens in the semi final that year as well at Windsor. Here, and I was lucky enough to score the goal in that one um, to beat the Glens. But when then we went to the final, you know, just that, that year was very good for me again, personally, you know, because got the finals and. You know, um, scoring the winner in the County Adrum and then we went on into the... The League Cup the, final. The CIS scored Cup a League Cup final. Again, against First your biggest half rivals. Half it was. Yeah, against your biggest rivals in, in Glen Torn. Um, you know, and to score a hat trick and win the game three 0 it, it gives you great pleasure. I'll tell you. Um, oh, it did for me as well. <laughs> believe you me. But when you're from East Belfast and you know, and a lot of Glen men in around you, you know, it was, it was great. It was a great occasion. You know, so then we just needed to knuckle down then and get the points of the board to win the league, which we did fairly convincingly over the course of the season. And then, of course, then you get the Irish Cup final. Irish Cup final again against your biggest rivals, you know, and you know, going one 0 down, you sort of think we're not going to do this now. We're not going to get the clean sweep. But then, Pistol Pete normally done best and come up and score two goals. Did you and Peter ever have like a laugh and a joke like, "Oh, I'm going to score more goals than you today"? No, or? no, absolutely not. It's, uh, I again, honestly, I mean that with the utmost respect. No, no, we we didn't, you know, and. Look, like, uh, if I thought he was in better position than me and score, I'd pass it to him. And, and likewise with him, which he had done on numerous occasions, um, we didn't set any targets or anything, but we just tried to work as well as we could with each other. And I think 
people say I became a wee bit telepathic in, uh, for mm -hmm. certain stages because we were playing that well. You know, I was going up and maybe holding the ball up or flicking on and Peter just knew when oh. to make the run. You know, it just worked for us. It clicked for us at that time. And uh, it helped us. Certainly that year it helped us, you know, because when you have two strikers scoring 90 goals, you're going to win something. <laughs> you know, and... and we won but, <laughs> but again, you know, when I look defensively, you know, when you have Winky and Noel and Alan Morrison in, in goals, you know, you're you're solid and the midfield four it was Michael and Magarivi and you know Warren Kearney and Tim Manchin you know mm -hmm. you four big strong Irish good Irish league players you know we were just so dominant that year and uh, I think we were well worthy and then I think that year as well I was I won the the football writers and the Ulster player of the year again mm -hmm. you know and again I was 36 at that stage you know so I felt I felt on top of my game and I was still 36 so no I really enjoyed it Another thing that stands out for me that season was the amount of penalties we seemed to miss in games. I remember you missing one yourself, not to no, no. throw you under the bus running at a boxing day when we beat the Glens 4-1 mm -hmm. at the Oval, where that was a chance then to go 5-0 up, and then Peter McCann gets a consolation for them. Yeah, you know, it was a chance for me to get a hat-trick as well. It, 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 was like, it was like maybe 18 or 19 penalties throughout the, the whole season were missed and you mentioned about the goals so it could have been so much more yeah it could have been you know and that boxing day as well was was a, was a good a good match and good memories as well because um, it's probably scored one of the best goals we've ever scored in it mm -hmm. uh, at the back post of the, the volley you know but again the gloss is taken off as you say you miss a penalty to, to get a hat trick but sure that's history and we just had You'd to You'd have probably on. taken missing the penalty to score a volley absolutely, like that. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But some really, truly special memories, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, that, that, that season was special, so it was, yeah. Beating the Glens to win the Irish Cup that season and winning the clean sweep, what was that like then in the changing rooms and for yourself, like even looking back on it now, because it's, you know, it hasn't been done since? Yeah, it was, to be honest, it was a surreal moment, you know, it didn't, it took a while for it to sink in, you know, because obviously the season was so good and we were playing so well and we were just knocking teams out of the way and winning games. And But when you get to the, the last match of the season, which is the Irish Cup final against your biggest rivals, to to complete the clean sweep, you know, it's not just a clean sweep, we, were, we held the Satanta Cup as well, mm -hmm. you know, so it was, it was a, a, a mad moment, you know. Simply because, you know, going one down, and I, I'll go back to a few years previous, you know, the Glens were very close to doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. I think they lost the cup final to Cole Rain. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we knew we had that pressure that they had this opportunity to stop us, and then with them going to goal up, um, they, they could have stopped us from doing it and taking away our glory. But thankfully, as I say, Peter stepped up to the mark, came up with the two goals, and we were able to dig in and, and win the Irish Cup. And then just when it's all over, you, you know, at, at that moment, you've only just won the Irish Cup. Mm -hmm. But when you, the cold light of day, when you go back and you sit down and you re rethink and you're good and you go, geez, we've won everything there is to be won. It's, it's a hard thing to take in, you know, because it's, it's, it's not an easy feat. It's, it, no. it's incredible because it means you have to play in basically nearly every single game of the season and play and win all the top, top games, which we were able to do. So no, it was a it was a great occasion, and you know it shows you how good it is. It was 2006, and people are still talking about it. It's almost 20 years ago, <laughs> and it hasn't been done since. And will it ever be done again? You know who knows. Um, but you know we had just basking the glory at that time and going to enjoy ourselves for one or two or three weeks. You know which we done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Glenn. Moving on to the 06 07 season, another double winning season then for yourself. Yeah, another great season, and you know this was just. For me, this was fairy tale stuff now because you're sort of getting into the sort of time of your your career where you probably shouldn't be playing as a striker. And I was, you know, 37, I think, at this stage, coming 38, uh, and still playing in the team. But to be winning league titles and and winning Irish cups, you know, it's a dream come true. And in the game in the Irish Cup, you know, to score in the Irish Cup, you know, in a final. Was great, and then, but you know, fair play to Dungannon on the day. They they gave us a real good match, and I think they possibly could have won it. I remember Rory. I think it was Rory Hummel. Maybe had a chance with the header. We could have won it, but then we went to the penalty shootout, and I think, I think in the penalty shootout, our experience came through. You know, because we'd been there so many times, and and the penalty, the penalties, we were more equipped with that, and thankfully we were able to go on and win it. And then that just epitomised it as well because we'd won the league already. So to win the league and cup double again was it was a great season. Another final that year, another Santander Cup final. Unfortunately, losing out in penalties this time mm -hmm. to Drogheda United. Yeah, yeah, great games again. Drogheda at that stage, you know, had sort of taken over from the likes of Shelburne and 
and, and stuff like that. You know, they were a really good, solid team. And, you know, that like Jason Byrne, I think, played centre forward for him and Brian Gartland was playing at the back and you know the, the top top players as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was difficult, but again, you know, one penalty shoot out you win, the other one you lose, you know, it's just you gotta take it. But if you were to say to me, Do you wanna win the Irish Cup to complete the double or win the Satanta, it's the Irish Cup all day long for me. Tell us a little bit about the Santanta Cup that season. I remember the game, the semi-final game against Cork, where, to be fair, we did rob them in the end with a 1-0 win. Aidan O'Kane scored right at the death. Then we had another game up there that season, uh, Derry City away, where we were 2-0 down and come back and drew 2-2 each. each yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember them. But they're all difficult games because these teams were all, they were investing heavily in their, in their squads and in their teams and they were bringing good players in, you know, so we had to be on top of our game to even to compete with them. You know, and I know after the Cork game, um, there was one, I think it was maybe Joe Gamble. Joe Gamble. Yeah, come you know, out. come out and give us a, a lot of uh, a lot of stick about, mm -hmm. you know, they should have won the game, but ultimately they didn't. You know, you can are we are we prepared better than them? Possibly, yeah. Well, have because they couldn't break us down, they couldn't score against us, and we won the game. So, you know, you got to take that one on the chin. The Derry City one's always tough going down there, <laughs> so it is. And I have a feeling. I think Paddy McCourt played that night, and he he had spells of playing he, he, really he, he well. He scored because they went, like I said, two 0 up, yeah, and then. Uh, was it yourself, I think, and then Mark Dixon yeah. equalised, yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, Aidan O'Kane uh, had a chance to win it, I think he hit the, the Yeah, post. but going, going to the Brandy Wells always tough as well, and as I say, they, they had good players as oh, well. Oh, they did, I. You know, and I remember Patrick Sheehan, um, Paddy, Paddy McCord at that time had the long, uh, the long hair. curly hair, and he run past Pat at one time, well, not for the first time, it was probably about <laughs> the tenth time, and Pat just had enough and just grabbed him with the hair and pulled him back, <laughs> you know, so it was funny, you know, a funny moment in the game, but no, it was it was good to get a result, you know, a 2-2 is a good result down there, you know, so, uh, but the satanic games are always great as well, something different, you know, you're stepping out of your comfort zone of the Irish League to go and play against teams who are full time and, and doing really well, so it was good to get a match up against them. Okay, Glenn, moving on to 07 08 season. Another treble winning season for the club and another personal milestone then for yourself, scoring your 500th career goal in a League Cup comeback win against Crusaders. Yeah, yeah, another good season. You know, um, to say you set out every season to, to win trophies. And, you know, what we've done the years previous, you don't really think you're going to go out and win the League and Cup, you know. As much as you'd want to, you don't think you're going to do it every year. You know, you just have to try and take it as much as possible. Well, we did, and obviously the the League Cup. You know, to be honest, I was disappointed I didn't start the game. You know, because um, hadn't scored for about I think it was about four or five games leading up to it. So the manager made a decision to uh, to leave me out and put me on the bench. You know, but watching the game, you know, we're getting frustrated because, to be totally honest, it wasn't a great Crusaders team at that stage. You know, and, and they were beating us two one. And then I got the call to go on. I think it went on with about 20 minutes to go. And luckily... Made a real impact, clearly. Yeah, luckily there was a, a ball coming in the box and was got to be able to get up and head it in the, into the top corner. And, and thankfully for me, it was my, my 500th senior goal. Uh, you know, so it was a good milestone to hit and it's such a big occasion, you know, so doing that, thinking, right, we've got us the extra time now, so hopefully we can go on and take it, take the game to an extra time. And then the ball just, you know, it went into the box and I remember the two Crusaders players coming and I was going through and... I just got there before and was able to prod it into the into the corner of the net and uh, it's real poachers finish. Yeah, it was. You know, you've scored many a goal. You know, it doesn't care what way they go in. If they're thirty yards or forty yards or two yards, they all mean the same. So for that one to go in in the last couple of minutes of a major cup final after the whole drama of coming back and you know the fans were delirious and you know the Crusaders players of them are out in their feet you know they were, they were done by then you know so we, we knew we'd done it so again it, it was great another part of the jigsaw then for another travel for us. Then the Irish Cup final that year against Coleraine going 1-0 down mm -hmm. then Peter Thompson second half scoring two goals then another eventful night then. Yeah yeah again you know um, we, and some of the cup fans we certainly do make it hard for ourselves, you know, and going going to go down again, you know. But as I, I said earlier on, you know, Peter does what he does best and scores important goals, and you know, scoring another two goals in the cup final, you know, his record in cup, cup finals was he scored in every cup final, yeah, was, <laughs> you know, it was incredible, you know. But the the, the score two goals again, come back and win, to to complete another not just a double but a treble this year. You know, it was, a, it was a fantastic achievement, just not just for Peter, but for the whole squad again, for, for the supporters, you know. And as I say, 
you know, when when you set out to start a season, obviously the league's your most important, but you always want to be in the Irish Cup final because it is the last day of the season. The whole euphoria around it, the crowd, you know, the, the suits and everybody going out and all before it. So to get there again and to win it, it, it was superb again. So, you know, that was another league, and, uh, another league and cup double for me in the bag, you know. Unfortunately, the last one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Glenn, moving on to your last season at the club, 08-09 season. 285 goals and 515th appearances for the club. A great accolade then for yourself. Yeah, it was great. It was great to get a testimonial. And, you know, if somebody asked me back there, I would have played 515 games and scored 285 goals. I probably said no because you burn in mind back there, I was 28. You know, so, and I always remember Lee Doherty, I say a good friend of mine, uh, at Linfield, it used to be the stage when you got up to about 31 or 32, you know, you were. Wastage, it's that, that stage, you know, so um, so for me to, to prolong it as long as it did and uh, to play as many games and score as many goals, it's a proud moment for me because, you know, my my family are all blue, blue supporters, mm -hmm. you know, and my dad was really proud whenever uh, that I sent, when I signed for the Blues and as much as he loved going to watch me for Glenavon, nothing gave him a better feeling than coming here and watching him, watching me play here, you know, so for to play for so long and you know, and then to score so many goals and important goals and win so many trophies, you know, it was great, um, great times. We met a lot, a lot of great players and a lot of great people. You know, it's memories it'll have forever. And you know, and as I say, it just it's sad when things have to come to an end. And unfortunately, that was my my season when it had to come to an end. Um, and to be honest, although we didn't win anything, I remember I think we played forty eight games that year and scored twenty four goals. You know, at thirty nine. So I was I was happy enough with my performances that year and what I'd done. But you know, unfortunately, time moves on and managers make decisions. And that was my last my last season. Uh, but thoroughly enjoyed my time here. You mentioned your longevity in the game. Is there anything you put that down to? Um, it's just hard work, you know, and desire to want to do well. You know, there's too many people, too many good people, good players go out of the game too early, mm -hmm. simply because you know they, they lose interest or they don't have the, the desire to go and do well. I wanted, I was a winner. I wanted to go on and keep winning. I wanted to score goals. I wanted to, to play every game, no matter how old I was, and I wanted to be involved. And I loved the camaraderie in the changing room, and I loved coming training. You know, sometimes. Couldn't do as much as some of the younger lads, but I still wanted to do it, wanted to come. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it just put it down to hard work. And, and that's what, you know, some of the so-called better players and luxury players can't deal with. And, and that's why they don't stay in the game as long. Then, obviously, you moved on to Lisbon Distillery mm -hmm. after your time at Linfield. Then, a uh, fond memory then for yourself winning the League Cup. Yeah, yeah. Especially down at your old stomping ground. You could say Moonview Park beating Porter down 3-1 in the final. Yeah. Um, again, you know, we went to the distillery and, uh, you know, I, I sort of wanted to get in, started getting into coaching and, and sort of joining the, the, get on the management ladder and I was given that opportunity by Jimmy Brown. But unfortunately, when I signed in the July and then the, the, the club that they sold me wasn't the club that was there because by the September, October time, the club obviously went into the CVA and, mm -hmm. you know, went into administration and stuff. So, but, you know, I hung about and... Uh, we tried our best and we kept the club up. Um, Tommy Wright came in as manager. Yep. Um, Tommy's a good friend of mine. And he just says, no, we'll, get, we'll give it a go here and see how it goes. So we, we were able to survive that year. And I was actually going to retire at the end of that year and just go into being a first-team coach. But Tommy asked me then, he says, stay on, play a few games, try and help the young lads along as, as you do. So I said, yeah, well, I'm... That year, I played another forty games. <laughs> so, uh, but thankfully, one of them was the League Cup final at Morneview against Portadown. You know, and at that stage, you know, we had a lot of young players coming through. The Jordan David, David Cushley, David was Cushley as well. Scott Davidson, Jordan Forsyth. You know, a lot of young lads who have, have stayed in the game for a long time. And uh, Scott Davidson and David Cushley actually scored the goals in the game mm -hmm. against a really good Portadown I team. Again, that, you know, nobody gives a a catch hell chance of winning that game. But for me. Last in memory, you know, pro as much as I've won here, probably see winning that cup, that gave me as much pleasure as anything because they still really were down in their boots. The team were poor. Tommy came in, gave us a lift. You know, I hung around. Pat McShane was there. Andy Hunter, you know, boys who had been around the block a bit, um, helped the young ones on. And as I say, nobody gives a chance of winning that. A bit like the Satanta, but we went out. We gave it everything we had. And thankfully, we were able to come out. And it was another, league, another winner's medal for me. Unexpectedly. What was it like then to, you know, be the more senior man in the dressing room then and then, you know, using your experience and knowledge and passing it on to 
all the younger generation or the younger players then that were playing for the Whites? No, it was good, you know, because a lot of the players, they, they did want to learn. They were very receptive on what, mm -hmm. what you were trying to say. And, you know, when you're trying to organise the not team out on the pitch, the senior players trying to organise the team out on the pitch. Even when we were here, you know, Noel and Winky and myself and boys like that, we were trying to just organise and mm -hmm. make sure everybody's doing what they're doing, you know. So we've done that at, at the still as well. And when you've got a lot of young legs on you, you know, it certainly helps and <laughs> let them do your running <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, so as I said, it worked out. And, uh, but then obviously Tommy moved on to bigger and better things and um, and I just decided, you know, that I was going to retire. So I went into, I just became a freaking coach then. Um, alongside John Cunningham, he was the manager, but then so I moved on then to Bollamy after that. Okay, Glenn, moving on to probably your most greatest of achievement of all, mm -hmm. you could say, representing the football club, tell us a little bit about this shirt and how you managed to come about it. Yeah, you know, um, it's one of those ones, you know, when you play at Linfield and you know, you play in teams and good teams and you, you look around what we've talked about, about what you've won as as teams and as squads, as individuals, you know, it's always great winning trophies. But on the this, the centenary dinner, obviously uh, the hundred twenty fifth anniversary dinner, sorry, um, Linfield decided to do their greatest ever eleven. Mm -hmm. And, and I, honestly, at the dinner I wasn't expecting to be anywhere near this. When you think of the players that have played here in Grace Windsor Park, you know... Um, I, I think it you didn't know beforehand. No, then, no, 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 didn't know. And when you're at the dinner and then to be in the, the starting 11 um, of the, the greatest all-time 11, you know, it was a massive, massive boost and, uh, you know, surprise and a little pride or, you know... Just a lot of things, emotions went through your head, you know, because when I was growing up and, you know, watching them, you know, and Martin McGaggy, like, was mm -hmm. my, you know, you, you want to be Martin McGaggy, you know, so um, you sort of think, you know. Like a few from, people um, grow up nice and yeah, they want to be Glen Ferguson. Yeah, you know, but, you know, but you think of the, the greats that have been here, so to be classed in amongst that, I was so proud. And to say, my dad was unbelievably proud, you know, and when he seen the shirt. It was brilliant. It was a great, a, great, uh, a great moment, and I think it was only myself and Noel Bailey really out of the mm -hmm. last sort of lot number of years yeah. players who get into it. You know, so um, it's something I, I I give a lot of tops away and people who ask for them. You know, but that's one that I've kept and would never give it away um, simply because of what it means to me. You know, to be mm -hmm. classed in that sort of, and particularly I think the number nine on the back of it as well. Yeah. You know, so iconic uh, for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And number nine, um, but just to have that there, you know, that's something I'd be able to pass on to my my children and, and my grandchildren as well. You know, so so proud to have it. So proud to be part of that team, uh, that select team that was picked. Um, I don't think too many of us could play now, but <laughs> you know, it's, it's great just to be even mentioned in the names of some of the names that are in the team. You know. Well, Glenn, thanks very much for taking time out. No problem. To share some of your special memories with us. Good Thank job. you.